the sleepy. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. We are already halfway through September. September 16, Monday, 2019. Hope everybody is having a good start of the week. It's going to be a very busy week for the Kleachko household. So let's get started with this commentary. Today's gospel comes from St. Luke, chapter 7, verses 1 to 10. We're going to read the first part of this, of this gospel. When Jesus had finished all his words to the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave who was ill and about to die. What's a centurion? Okay, he's a Roman official, okay? The Roman army official. So he had a slave who was sick and about to die. And he was valuable to him. He was valuable to him. When he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and save the life of his slave. They approached Jesus and strongly urged him to come, saying, He deserves to have you do this for him. Meaning the centurion. The centurion deserves that you, Jesus, come to him. <clears throat> for he loves our nation, and he built the synagogue for us. So he must be a wealthy man. He even built a synagogue for the Jews. And Jesus went with them. But when he was only a short distance from the house of the centurion, the centurion sent friends to tell him, okay, Jesus was arriving. The centurion sent out some of his friends to meet him halfway and told him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not consider myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and let my servant be healed. And we'll stop there. Are those words familiar to you? Domine non sum dignus ut intra sub tectum meum sed tantum dig verbo et senavitur anima mea. When do we say those words? When do we say those words? Before communion, right? Before communion. Before receiving Holy Communion, we... We uh, see those words that were taken from this good centurion. Lord, I am not worthy that you come under my roof. Right? But say the word and my soul, in this case, my soul will be healed. What humility. What humility this centurion is showing and has exhibited in this uh, story. He did not feel himself worthy that Jesus would come under his roof, meaning into his house, right? <clears throat> so, and so he sends out messengers to already tell Jesus, you know, uh, I'm not worthy that you come to me. You, you just say the word from wherever you are right here. And I know, I have faith. I know my servant will be healed. We have to show the same sense of humility every time we receive our Lord in Holy Communion. That is why in the Latin Mass we even repeat it thrice. Domine non sum dignus ut intra sub tecto meum sed tantum dig verbo senavitur anima mea. We say three times to really, really express to our Lord our unworthiness, yet our desire. See? That He comes in order to heal our soul. Beautiful, beautiful. It's, it's an aspiration that, in fact, we should be repeating many times. Many times, together with the spiritual communion. I wish, Lord, to receive you with a purity, humility, and devotion with which the Most Holy Mother received you, with the spirit and fervor of the saints. Very beautiful prayers that we have in, in the Catholic Church that remind us of the awesomeness, the grandeur, the great gift that the Holy 
Eucharist is for our souls. You know what happens there when you when you take in Jesus, when you when we physically take Jesus into ourselves, what happens to us? Oh, let's make the analogy. When we eat anything, like now we're having breakfast. What happens to this piece of cheese or piece of bread when you take it inside of you? What happens to it biologically? It's digested, and when it's digested, what happens to it? It's broken up. It's broken up, and what happens to it? It becomes part of you, Sophia, right? Okay? It becomes part of you. That is what happens to food, right? That's why there's a saying some people say, you become what you eat, <laughs> okay? Especially the animal rights people, that's what they say. You become an animal because you eat animals. I wonder if you become a plant because you eat plants. <laughs> anyway, but what you eat, right, becomes part of you. But you know what happens when we eat our Lord in Holy Communion? The opposite happens. We become transformed into Jesus Christ. We become Christ-like by His grace. Right? By His grace, we become Christ-like. That is why when we receive our Lord, we are not just taking it as food. We are taking Him in communion. See? Communion means to be united with. Right? Communion means unity, to be united with Jesus Christ. And we, by grace, get transformed to be like Christ. Okay? Like Christ, not, of course, not physically, not biologically, but spiritually. We become, we, 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 we assume okay, the kind of holiness that Christ wants us to have. Which is what? He told us, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And how do you do that? Well, you come follow me because I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he follows that up by even saying, this is my body, this is my blood. Take, 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 because this is for your salvation. Okay? So, all of those things have meaning if you put them together. <clears throat> and it all, it all boils down to the meaning of communion, where... When we take Christ physically into our own bodies, we get transformed and become Christ-like. <clears throat> okay? Now, you know where that brings me to, to, uh, to realize is how much, how much we, we should be thankful and grateful to God for this very, very big gift. For this very great <clears throat> and wonderful gift that he has given us in the Eucharist. And that is why I have been pushing and I have been advocating and I have been teaching everybody to, to do Thanksgiving after Mass. <clears throat> this, this custom of giving thanks to God after receiving him at Holy Mass has been lost in our Catholic churches. Nowadays, especially here in churches in America, plenty of people rush out, including the priest. And number one, it's the priest who rush out after mass, after the recessional. And they're there in the plaza of the church greeting each other and exchanging pleasantries and uh, joking and kidding and, uh, and eating donuts and coffee. Yet oblivious of the fact that just about five minutes before that, they had received our Lord in Holy Communion. How many of us give thanks? Or is our thanksgiving so stingy that we limit it to just the time we are at Mass and after that last blessing we're gone? You know, biologically, scientifically, and it's even in the Catechism, we are told that the species of Bread and wine under which form Jesus has decided to take 
in order to make himself more available to us physically, those species, they disintegrate after about 15 minutes that it had remained in our bodies, after we had received them. Therefore, for those 15 minutes from the time that that communion has reached our mouth, our Lord is physically, physically inside of us. We, for those short 15 minutes, are walking tabernacles where Jesus has decided to be inside in order to give us grace and to nourish our souls. Why can we not even take 15 minutes to give thanks to God. What is so important about all of those hospitality related activities outside of the, of the church in the plaza that, that makes it so urgent for people to go out there instead of thanking God, thanking Jesus for having received him in Holy Communion. Number one, we are already unworthy to receive Him, right? And yet, we drum up that unworthiness by being ungrateful at the end. <laughs> After having received our Lord in Holy Communion, not only were we unworthy to receive Him, now we are even an ingrate. We're even ungrateful. We can't even stick around and find in our hearts 10 to 15 minutes of thanksgiving to God. How pathetic can that situation be? Yesterday we started a custom which we hope to be able to prosper and invite. I'd like to invite you if you're listening to this one. In the Latin Mass here in our parish, we, I and a few other families have decided that we will uh, practice this uh, 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 good uh, um, practice of thanksgiving after mass in a more in a more public way if you will uh, by inviting the altar servers uh, of that mass to join us where uh, well, I, we, we spend a few more minutes in personal thanksgiving after mass and then we recite some thanksgiving prayers the Anima Christi, the, uh, the uh, prayer of St. Thomas, um, the prayer of Our Lady, uh, several uh, of these things that I have put together in a format that would serve to help us do our Thanksgiving after Mass. And this is some, something we can do every day. It's a habit that uh, we do uh, every time we go to Mass and receive Holy Communion. To show some gratitude to God for the big, big, favor and grace of receiving him in holy communion so let's not let us not uh, be stingy about our time spent with our lord in thanksgiving after mass let us give him all the time that we can if in fact the, from from the time we receive him and give him all the 10 15 minutes uh, uh, that would be required biologically for our bodies to assimilate the species of bread that we had taken uh, a few minutes uh, earlier at Mass. Let us spend that time in thanksgiving and be thankful not only for that, but for everything else that's a fruit of that communion. See, God showers us with so much grace, so much grace through the Holy Eucharist because the sacraments, particularly the Holy Eucharist, are channels of grace for us. And beginning from the Holy Eucharist, God showers us with many, many more graces all throughout our day, all throughout our lives. There's so much to be thankful for. So little time to do it. So let's not be stingy with God when it comes to giving thanks for having received Him in Holy Communion. Okay, and we're off to Mass. As soon as we close up this Facebook Live today, we're off to Mass. We will receive our Lord in Holy Communion, those of us who are worthy to do so, or presume to be worthy 
because of having gone to uh, a sincere confession and having tried to avoid all sorts of sin, venial and mortal. We presume we are worthy, although in truth, nobody is worthy. Nobody is as worthy as should be to receive our Lord. But we presume we are because we have faith in the graces that He has given us. And we, we, we have faith in the invitation He has extended to all of us to come receive Him in that manner. Okay, I hope everybody has a good week ahead. Have a good day today. And there is Eva saying bye-bye Ava <laughs> say bye-bye what a cute smile Ava thank you bye. greet everybody hi okay bye-bye push the button